Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is the basic properties of linear transformations. We have defined and gave examples of linear transformations on a previous video, and we have motivated it in, even in another video, and now we are about to prove some very basic properties of a linear transformation. So let me remind you what a linear transformation is. B and W are vector spaces. We have a function from one vector space to the other, and this is called a linear transformation if it respects addition, that means T of V1 plus V2 is T of V1 plus T of V2 for all V1, V2, V2 and V, and T of alpha V is alpha T of V for all V and V and for all scalars alpha. If you're not familiar with vector spaces, watch my videos on vector spaces first. If you're not familiar with linear transformations at all, watch those also, although I will give you a little bit of motivation in just a second. So we also sometimes have V and W actually be the same vector space. In those cases, sometimes we use the word linear operator uh, to denote a linear transformation. So linear operator is just a linear transformation, but the domain and the codomain of the function are the same. Now, why do we have those conditions? Well, we have vector spaces and we have a function of T from V to W. If to relate the property, the vector space properties of V and W, we need, the, we need to, the, this T to behave properly with respect to addition scalar multiplication. So what does that mean? So for example, we might have a vector V1 over here at V and that goes somewhere. It goes to T of V1. And we have another vector V2 and that goes somewhere to T of V2. But if we want a linear transformation, then V1 plus V2, where should that go? It can't go anywhere it likes. It, it's bounded by those previous things where V1 and V2 went. V1 went to T of V1, V2 to, to, to T of V2. V1 plus V2 should go to T of V1 plus T of V2. And so where V1 plus V2 and generically would go to T of V1 plus V2, but that should be the same as T of V1 plus T of V2 for all V1 and V2 um, in V. And the same thing with scalar multiplication. If V goes somewhere, then alpha V is not free to go anywhere it likes. It has to go to alpha times T of V. And those are the lin lin linear properties of a linear transformation. If they sa a function satisfies those, then we have a linear transformation. Now, we want to think about some very elementary properties of linear transformations. These basically just follow from the definition. They almost don't need a proof, but, but um, we, to, to be precise, we want to do that. So we have a, we're now given a linear transformation. We're sitting down. We have two vector spaces, V and W, and this linear transformation walks through the door. Without doing anything, what are some of the things we can say? So the first question is that, well, V we know has a zero vector and W has a zero vector. Um, is the, Where does the zero vector of V go to? And if there is any justice in the world, you might think, well, the zero should go to the zero. And for linear, for a general map, that doesn't have to be true. Zero could go anywhere it likes. But for, for linear transformation, that will be true. So the first thing is that the zero of V is bound to go to the zero of W. The second one is that minus V has to go to minus T of V. Um, and the third one is that not only of uh, the linear transformation, we said that it respects addition, but it also respects subtraction. And the final thing is that really what a linear transformation does is that it respects linear combinations. T of a linear combination of elements is the same linear combination of T of those elements. And in fact, this is sort of the most general way of thinking about a linear transformation um, if you want to. Again, most of these are pretty straightforward. I urge you to stop the video and prove them yourself. You should be able to do that. If not, then follow along with me and see how I do that. And after I do this, then I will say something, it's a different lemma about function composition or composition of linear transformations that you want to pay attention to. So let's go on. So proofs. So again, we have vector spaces and we have a linear transformation T from V to W. So now, First of all, why is zero have to go to zero? Well, here's the reason. Um, well, where is T of zero V gonna be? Well, I don't know, but I know that zero V is the same as the scalar zero times zero V, I know that. But scalars can come out because this is a linear transformation. So this is zero times T of zero V and zero times anything, T of zero V, I don't know what it is, but it's some element of W. And if you multiply it by the scalar zero, you will get zero of W. So I prove to you that T of zero of W must be zero of W. Now, why is T of minus V minus T of V? There's various ways of proving this. One way is to say, again, use scalar multiplication. T of minus V is the same as T of minus one times V. Minus V is minus one times V. And that scalar can come outside and you get minus one times T of V, which is minus T of V, and we're done. 
Why is TFV minus W, TFV minus TFW? This is going to be like a broken record. TFV minus W is the same as TFV plus minus W. V minus W is the same as V plus minus W. But now um, a linear transformation breaks these two down. T of something plus something is T of the first thing plus T of the second thing. So this is the same as T of V plus T of minus W. But T of minus W, we just proved is minus T of W. So we have T of V minus T of W, and we are done with these. Now, what about the, um, the last one? The last one needs a little bit of more work, but not that much work. So again, we have a linear transformation. We have now a whole bunch of vectors V and a whole bunch of scalars. And we want to look at T of alpha 1, um, T of alpha 1, V1. Um, um, plus alpha two v two um, um, plus alpha two alpha three v three all the way till alpha n v n and 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 how what we're going to do is that we are going to break it out and we're going to say that well okay think of this first alpha one v one as an apple and take a, think of all the rest as as a very fat strawberry so we're really asking what's t of apple plus strawberry, but this is a linear transformation. So if you have T of something plus something, it breaks down. And so T of apple plus strawberry is going to be uh, T of apple uh, plus uh, T of strawberry. T of, uh, T, T of alpha one V1, the apple plus T of st strawberry. Um, and, okay, so we have T of alpha one V1 plus T of alpha two V2 plus all the way till alpha NVN. Now alpha V1, that scalar can come out and, and we can have alpha one T of V one, and we have the rest. And from the rest, we can again uh, uh, do the same thing and, and peel off this alpha two V two. Think of alpha two V two as apple and the rest of it as a fat strawberry. And, and you can split that again. And, and when you do that, you get T alpha one T V one plus T of alpha two V two plus everyone else. But now in the second one, this alpha two comes out and I have alpha two T of V two plus the rest. And, and I continue doing this, peeling off one of them at a time. And at the end, I will get that. In. I get alpha one T of V one plus alpha two T of V two all the way till alpha N T of V N. And that's the end of that proof. Okay, now um, what about function composition? So if you have three vector spaces, um, V, W, and U, and if you have a map from V to W and another one from W to U, and assuming that both are a linear transformation, you have an irresistible urge to compose them. That's because the co-domain of the first one is the same as the domain of the second one, and therefore you can compose them. So, uh, so we can find the function L circle T, watch my videos on function composition if you're not familiar with this, that goes actually directly from V to W and from V to U. And what we want to prove is that that composition is a linear transformation. So what we have is that we have V, W, U, we have T that goes from V to W, we have L that goes from W to U, and L circle T goes directly from V to U. And we want to show that that's a linear transformation. So how do I prove that? I pick two elements of V and a scalar. And uh, first I'm looking at L circle T, that's the name of the composition. What does it do to V1 plus V2? But L circle T is L of T of whatever. So I have L of T of V1 plus V2. And, and if I just look inside T of V1 plus V2, well, T is a linear transformation. So that becomes T of V1 plus T of V2. But now I have L of T of V1 plus T of V2, L of apple plus fat strawberry. And so again, that becomes L of T of V1 plus L of T of V2, but that, and, and, um, and that's the same as L circle T of V1 uh, plus L circle T of V2. And, and I'm done. So I showed you that L circle T of V1 plus V2 is the same as L circle T of V1 plus L circle T of V2. For some reason, I had this expression twice. But I can do the same thing with alpha V1. What's L circle T of alpha V1? Well, that's L of T of alpha V1 by the definition of function composition. But inside here, I have T of alpha, alpha V1, but the alpha can come out. And so I get L of alpha T of V1. But, but then I have L of alpha times something. And L is a linear transformation, so alpha can come out again. And I have alpha L of T of V1, and that's the same as alpha of L circle T of V1. And I have to prove to you that L circle T has both properties of a linear transformation. And so it's a linear trans transformation. So this was a quick video on ele very elementary properties of linear transformations. Um, this was the third video in a series of videos. And the next video, we'll talk about the image, then the kernel, then more, more on matrix transformations, 
then the important Ragnality theorem, and then we go back to isomorphisms and prove all kinds of things about them. Um, this is the end of the, this video. This is a picture of Santa Monica Beach, and um, I urge you to um, I urge you to subscribe if you want to be subjected to more videos like this, and like this video if you happen to actually like it. See you on the next lecture.